this is Jonathan Lane, and today I'm here with Kevin Croxton, who just released a wonderful fan film starring fourth and fifth graders from the Parkview Elementary School. If you've done your homework, you've already watched that fan film, and now you're listening to this wonderful interview with their teacher. Uh, first of all, Happy Easter. Happy Easter. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, I know you directed it. Did you also write the fan film? Yes, I wrote the fan film. I wrote the the dialogue, lyrics, pretty much crafted it all from scratch. I recorded the music in my studio. I have a recording studio. I write, actually write music for film and television outside of school. And that, this is one of the ways that uh, I could teach the children about music and video production by doing these videos. We do one every year, a different kind of video, usually of some sort of a movie takeoff. And, um, but yes, I did, uh, I did everything except for the kids speaking and singing and, you know, so yes. <laughs> so, so this, this fan film, um, you recorded it at Starbase Studios. When, when were the kids there? They were there in mid January. But you started working on on planning it uh, a long time before that, right? Yes, sir. Long time ago, we plan- I started working on planning this last summer. And so, what did what did you do at that point? Now, if I remember correctly, you were writing music for uh, for Glenn Wolf for one of the Federation Files episodes. Is that correct? Well, yes. Uh, here's how this occurred. Uh, last spring. I guess in April or May, I was on Facebook and I ran into someone that was a Facebook friend in the film community because I write music for for film and television outside of school. And I had met someone on a set and saw them on Star Trek sets. And I was blown away. So I'm like, where are they? You know, I'm here in Arkansas. Surely they're in California or something. Well, lo and behold, they were in Harrison, Arkansas, which is about three hours north of, northeast of here. And so I found out who to contact, and that was Dan Reynolds. And so I, I called uh, Dan Reynolds and told him that I do music videos uh, with my fourth and fifth grade music club at Parkview and told him about my idea of, of maybe trying to do a Star Trek music video. And he invited me to come up to the set in mid-June, and so I came up there, and they were working on a fan film. And I was blown away by the sets. And uh, so we got to talking, and I met Glenn Wolf, And they talked to me about maybe trying to, to help them with some music. And I came back and did some music for one of their fan films. And uh, so we kept in touch after that and talked with my principal. And she loved the idea of trying to do a fan film. And, uh, of course, we most of our field trips are just – 20 minutes away <laughs> to, to another part of the town. Uh, but I'm like, no, can, can we go three hours on a bus? And, and uh, so she said, sure. So we got it approved to do it on a Saturday. And, uh, of course, I went back and I started writing the, the script, and I storyboarded it out with actually pictures from classic Star Trek that I got on the Internet. I built my story up. I sent it to, to Dan Reynolds and showed him what I was doing. And uh, so originally the MacGuffin of this was going to be – Santa Claus in space. Santa Claus was gone, and there was his sleigh floating in space. Uh, but as we got into this, you know, most of my videos I release in December uh, for, for Christmas. But this was so involved, and a lot of stuff was going on. I just decided to take my time and do this right, so we made it the Easter Bunny. And so I uh, redid the script just a little bit, retooled it, uh, So before my kids came back to school, I listened to Star Trek music as much as I could, and I recorded all of the music in my studio from beginning to end, knowing what their range was that they could sing in, and just constructed all that music in the same instrumentation that they would in classic Star Trek. I wanted it to sound, feel like a classic Star Trek episode from beginning to end. So after I recorded the music, And I found the classic Star Trek sound effects. We put them in. And then I did all the voices and all of the singing myself so the kids could have a reference and hear what what I wanted them to do. So when the the school started, we were all ready to go. And uh, once I got my music club started at the beginning of the year, uh, we had tryouts for the speaking parts, the ones that wanted to to drop her apart. 
Okay, so at the beginning of the school year, you told the kids in your music club you're going to be doing a Star Trek music video. When, what was the reaction to that? Are, are they already fans or not? Well, it was funny because when I planned to do this and told my wife uh, about this, and she said, do you think that they'll know classic Star Trek? And I said, we're going to find out. So when I, I showed the, the kids in music club the pictures from the sets, they just gasped. I heard this, <gasps> this breath. And, and the kids said, oh, we know this. Our parents know this. I mean, they were so excited. And, you know, th- this little girl comes up to me, and she says, Mr. Croxton, I just want you to know that my family and I, we just love Star Trek, and I just love Ahura. And I knew what she was saying. She wanted to play Ahura. So when we had tryouts, these kids came in. I mean, they were so excited. You know, kids tried up for all kinds of parts. But this girl comes in and says, all I want to be is a hurrah. And let me tell you, she nailed it. She nailed it. So once we cast these parts, the kids got on to Netflix and started watching classic Star Trek. You know, they, they were familiar with it, but they really got to know it better. I think we got a lot of new fans, too, because of this. And so these kids started watching Kirk and Spock and Ahura and Chekhov and Scotty and came in. I brought my microphone. I have a really good microphone that I brought from my studio at home and portable digital recorder. And we did voice recordings because everything was pre-recorded. So they lip synced on set up in Harrison. So everything was pre-recorded. So these kids, I mean, they, they did their lines over and over again to get in character. And then, of course, I took the best Wait, lines. Wait, they, they lip synced? Because, I mean, I looked at that stuff. That looked really, really good. I didn't, I didn't have no idea yes. they had lip synced. Everything in that show was lip synced. Captain, I've tried hailing them on every frequency. No response. Captain, I'm not detecting any life signs. We're in visual range. On screen. And if they were off, I scooted it. Like, because I, I did the recordings and sound bites. Like, I would have the characters, if, if they had a longer line, I would have them say it in pieces, in character, so that I could shift the dialogue and make sure that if they were off, that, that I could make it hit. But I'll tell you something. When we were on set, you know, we, we would do those lines over and over and over again to get several good takes of each line as they were lip syncing. Uh, and they, they did really good. I mean, I was able to get several lines, and we were able to sync it up. And, and yes, so. <laughs> oh, man, that, that, that is just that's fantastic. Cause it really does. It sounds amazing. I mean, usually in the, in the Star Trek fan films that you see, especially the ones at Starbase Studios, you know, there's a little bit of, of sound distortion because there's either they're using a boom mic or they're not using a mic at all. Um, yeah, know, I mean, I understand are, what you're saying. I, I'm not um, sure what other people do, though, but I'll – because, you know, it's funny. Is, you know, it's, I, I really didn't watch a lot of – I mean, I've watched some fan films. But not, you know, my main focus here was to create the feeling of a classic episode. And, and I'm, since I'm a sound guy and a music guy, you know, it's, I wanted uh, – every video we've ever done has been lip synced. Everything uh, in, in the past. And, and we've done everything from, uh, from Harry Potter to Star Wars to The Hobbit. We've just done a lot of different kinds of videos. The sound, I wanted to make sure that the sound sounded like classic Star Trek. And I wanted to make sure the sound was clean and pure. So, yes, we, we lip synced everything. Uh, and the kids did a great job. Oh, the kids did fantastically. Uh, let me ask you a question. How, how many kids are in your music club in total? 33. 33. And then were they all there? All there. So the kids that, that didn't get the big parts, were, were they kind of disappointed or was just everybody just, you know, so happy to go and play on those sets? Well, here's, here's what I did. So all the kids that tried out for speaking parts, if they didn't get a speaking part, I made sure that they were visible, more visible because that's what they wanted. So if they didn't get a speaking part, they were either in the Federation landing party that beamed down to the planet or they were one of the groups of Klingons, either on the view screen or the ones that beamed down to the planet. So nobody was disappointed. Everybody was excited. Yeah, it looks like you know everybody got a chance to you know point to their their parents and their friends and say, "Hey, there's me." Absolutely. Did you did you have the parents there as well? I mean, did you have to get 33 kids and 33 parents all together on one bus and transport them all three and three and a half hours each way? Well. I invited any parents that wanted to come 
to join us. And we had, oh, I can't remember, we probably had 20 parents show up at least. Uh, we had a lot of parents. I think since I've started doing these videos, the parent involvement has just skyrocketed. And I'll, let me tell you something else about that trip. It was freezing cold that day. Oh, yeah, January was, in Arkansas, you're mm-hmm. right. Listen, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, I, I want to say it was about 13 degrees that day. And a lot of kids, there was a, the, there's a gentleman that had owned all of this property uh, and had this house up on the hill, and he let the kids that weren't filming at the time, to, to, he, he let the parents and those kids stay there. And then the other kids would come down to the set. And the set's in this warehouse, and there's no electricity in this warehouse. It's run off generators. So there was no heat in there. So the parents brought space heaters. And one of the generators we had offset powering these space heaters, and these kids would stand in this warm zone just to, to, keep, you know, to keep warm. And then when it was time to come up, they would go up and they would uh, you know, film. Uh, but uh, I'll tell you something else, too. When we were on set, the, the kid that played Captain Kirk – he came up there sick. In fact, the day before, they went and tested him for the flu, and, and uh, he didn't have it, so he, got to, he came. But listen, he came up there sick. All these kids were freezing cold. But when we said action, man, he would stand up, what is the meaning of this attack? And then he would go back to blowing his hands. I mean, <laughs> here's a funny story. But the kid that played, uh, that played Scotty, his nose was bright red and so the makeup the makeup lady came up there and she had some translucent powder that she had been putting on their faces to make sure that there wasn't any glare and we just dabbed his nose with translucent powder and his cold nose just went away <laughs> so when you you know these kids were freezing but listen they did a great job uh, they did a fa- oh they, they did a fantastic job i mean I, I i sort of imagine it's probably like this when when they're filming game of thrones in iceland but uh you guys, you did it to fourth and fifth graders in Arkansas. Um, so the kids watched Star Trek, and, and they learned how Kirk and Ahura and Scotty and everybody else acted. Uh, but I'll tell you, they, they really caught a lot of the nuances incredibly well. I mean, was, was that you as a director making sure that they did it right, or, or how, did, how did they get it so right? Well, let me tell you, when we were on set, uh, Glenn Wolf. I mean, he sat there and worked with these kids. I mean, I can't say enough about Glenn Wolf and Dan Reynolds. They were both so helpful. You know, Dan was behind the scenes making sure everything was working right, and Glenn was right there with the kids, and he would say, you know, like he would talk to the, to, to the, to the child playing the captain, he would say, no, turn like this and put your hand here, and when, when you say this, you need to look, you know, turn your head this way. And so he was very helpful in, in, in helping them capture the, just the right look of, of these characters. Oh, that's great. So you basically had uh, your own little assistant director there, your, your acting coach. Absolutely. Like I said, they, he was so helpful. And, 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 of course, Dan Reynolds was behind the scenes uh, getting things set for, for each shot. And, and, yeah, it was just a tremendous experience. So you had about a three-hour drive up there, three-hour drive back. Did everybody go on the same bus? Most of the kids did come on the bus. Uh, we had about 20 parents I would say 20 parents that followed us in cars. We had a big caravan that went up there. We met at the school about seven in the morning, freezing cold that morning. Uh, we loaded up and we headed out and got up there about 10 o'clock. By the time we got everything set up to shoot and, and finished filming, it was about seven at night. So we didn't end up getting back till about 10 o'clock uh, that night. So it was a long day. Oh yeah. That was a very long day of filming. So it looks like for the Federation tunics, you probably bought those at a costume shop because I recognize them. Uh, but those Klingon tunics, uh, where, where did you get those? Well, the Klingon tunics were made uh, by a local seamstress that we know. Uh, I went and found the fabrics, and uh, she made them for us, including the gold sash. Uh, and I'll tell you something else that's really cool, the, the Klingon command pendant that's on the the commander's gold sash uh at our middle school they have a 3d printer and you know prints plastic and we found the klingon uh emblem online and she printed it and we painted it gold and affixed it to it so it was pretty cool the the the, the klingon and i'll say the makeup we had a makeup uh one of the parents did makeup and she was just amazing uh and, and doing the klingon's makeup i do want to say something about the federation outfits 
what we did for that is those, those costumes can be pretty pricey. Uh, and I worked for two months last fall talking with Ruby's Costumes in New York. And after two months, our school was able to get a wholesale contract. So we were able to get all the costumes for the Federation members at wholesale. Uh, so that was a, a nice nice deal for the parents. They were able to get a nice price break. And I'll tell you, that's something that's going to help us out in future videos as well. Are you going to do future videos that are Star Trek videos? I don't know. Uh, I, I, you know I haven't thought, thought ahead yet. I'm still you know, trying to promote this video. And, uh, but you know, typically every year we do something different. I would love to do another Star Trek video. Probably next year we'll probably do something very different. Uh, I'm not saying I won't ever come back to it because Star Trek is – I have a great love for Star Trek, so I would be open to it for sure. But uh, I don't know. We'll see. But if you if you do other things, you obviously have access now to the wholesale discount there at Ruby's. So it doesn't matter what uh, what what genre or franchise you do, you'll you'll have access to those costumes, right? Correct. Well, that is, that is fantastic. So so the parents did have to pay for the costumes. Did, did every kid get their own costume that the parent paid for? Or was it more like, you know, ever, we're pooling our resources to pay for this whole project? Every parent placed the order. And then, I, I mean, I did a group order for it. Um, we did one group order through the school since we have the wholesale contract. But, you know, all the parents came together, and we all, you know, they, they, they placed their order and, and – we, we bought the costumes, and uh, I, I mean, I, I actually pitched in uh, for the Easter Bunny costume, you know, since, uh, and I'll tell you, that, the funny thing was, that was actually my son that played the Easter Bunny, uh, and uh, he, he's actually not in our school. He's older, but I needed someone really tall because the, the costume was really big, and my son is just a, a huge Star Trek fan, and he's always wanted to be a part of our videos for years, so... I said, why don't you be the Easter Bunny? And he jumped all over that. <laughs> how, how old is your son? 14. He oh, also said in the, in the credits he, he played the Gorn. Was that correct? He did play the Gorn. I'll tell you, originally, originally he was going to play the Gorn, and there was another administrator in the district that was a huge Star Trek fan, and I talked with him about, about playing the Easter Bunny, but at some point he, uh, he, had, uh, he had something come up and he couldn't, so I – I said, well, come on and be the uh, – I told my son, come on and be the Easter Bunny. And so that ended up being his main role. Uh, and I was glad because once we got back to town where we live, uh, we had more to film. We had to film the where we beamed down to the planet, and I needed him there. And uh, then we did the, the scene where you see him on the, green, on, the, uh, on the view screen, and that was – we shot all that green screen. So we had two more filming sessions after we left – the sets in Harrison, you know, with the, over the next couple of weeks, we, we finished up uh, our filming and I needed him there. So it was good. Cause I could just tell my wife, I said, please bring my son after school down here. <laughs> she did. Also the other, the other thing is, is the makeup. Uh, Cause you obviously did a lot of uh, Klingon makeup and you said, mm-hmm. obviously you did a, you know, the, the, the makeup for the, uh, the kids, you know, powdering the noses and such. Uh, was that mm-hmm. makeup person one of the parents or somebody from the school or just somebody else that you, you knew from the, uh, the community? One of the parents, one of the parents, and she was amazing. She really stepped up, and I, I was impressed uh, at what a good job she did uh, with, uh, you know, with working with Spock, working with, you know, she, she had to do a liquid latex uh, and the, the spirit gum, to, to, to tack the ears down and just, and then she's make up to smooth it out. And, uh, she worked on the, you know, worked on all the Klingons of course, and did their, their beards and mustaches. And I was just blown away. She was wonderful. Okay. Well, I do want to ask you about, about that, that alien, uh, that alien planet. Um, cause that, that looked like an interesting place to film. Yes. Uh, that was at a rock quarry outside of town. And, uh, I was, it's funny because I had gone to another place that I looked very similar. It was some kind of a quarry, and they would not let us what it was filmed there. And so I was on my way to another location that someone had told me about. Couldn't find it, so I stepped into the office of this particular rock quarry, thinking that that there'd be no way that they would let us let us do this. And they were very open to it, and uh, they let us come down and film. We did it on a Saturday, and. Uh, you know, we met at the school, did the makeup, and then we went on over to the rock quarry and had a great time and looked very, very Star Trek-like, like some kind of a alien planet and just worked great. 
All right, so we've covered the actors, we've covered costumes, we've covered makeup, we've covered sets, we've covered location shoots. What about the special effects? Did did you do those too, or was that somebody else? No, I, uh, a guy named Rob McConnell. I found him on the internet. Originally, I was going to try to shoot the ships with models and green screen. In fact, the lady that, that at the middle school that 3D printed the Klingon badge, we were actually trying to construct an Easter Bunny ship out of, on 3D print. But right before the holidays, uh, right before Christmas break, I stumbled onto this guy on YouTube, and I was blown away by his work. And so I, I sent him a message. He's in Maine, and he volunteered to do all this for us. And, and he just wanted screen credit, and it was such a blessing for him to, to do that. And he constructed an Easter Bunny ship and renamed our ship the USS Parkview. You know, people won't get it, but it's NCC 1619 because our address is 619 Parkview Street. That's where Parkview Elementary is. <laughs> oh. So it's got, there's a lot of inside jokes in there. In fact, the planet that they chase the Klingons to with the Easter Bunny is called Pointer Prime because – our school district is the Van Buren Pointers, and the colors are green, and so that's why it's a green planet. No one outside of Van Buren will get that. That's okay, but it's just kind of an inside joke, you know? Well, now they'll get uh, it. They will, correct. In fact, if you listen to the star date, it was, uh, it was 331.18.5, right before Easter, March 31st, <laughs> 2018. No one's going to pick right. that up. But it was it's kind of an inside, you know, right before Easter. <laughs> All those little it's, – it's an Easter egg, dude. It is, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I guess your, your, your kids are very satisfied with uh, how everything came out. What did, what did they say when they, uh, when they first saw it? Oh, they were blown away. They were just blown away. I'll tell you what was interesting is this guy named Michael Ferris, he did the editing for us. And uh, as we were putting it together – uh, I, I showed the kids kind of rough drafts as it was coming together. So, for example, when you saw the Klingons on the view screen, of course it was green screen. So when they first saw it, it was just green behind them. And I explained to them how it was going to look in the end. And, and of course, they were blown away just by that, just by watching as it was all coming together. And then when they saw the final, I mean, they just could, they were just amazed. Uh, in fact, the response has just been tremendous at our school. Um, we had some behind-the-scenes photos. Uh, in fact, uh, there's, there's a lady, a photographer. If you want some of these photos, you're welcome. I, I'll, I'll be happy to send you some. Her name is Brenda Yelvington. She took about 2,000 photos of us. I'm not kidding. Oh, wow. She came up there and followed us along and uh, all the production stuff. And the, listen, some of these photos will just blow your mind. They're just incredible. And uh, anyway, so I, I did a little production uh, behind the scenes for my school, our school, I think it's about four to 500 kids. When I saw, we showed it, we premiered this Wednesday morning that it came on YouTube and just to kind of kick it off. And so I showed the production photos and there's one of, uh, of the kid that plays uh, Spock and he was doing the voice work. I had showed a picture of him by the microphone. And anyway, he had his hand up, uh, you know, doing the Vulcan sign, which wasn't in the film. but all, So now I've got all these little kindergartners coming into my music room trying to do this Vulcan hand sign after seeing it. It's so <laughs> cute, man. It's just, I mean, it's, it's great because not only is it excited my music club kids about Star Trek, but now I've got this, you know, all these kids at school that are now wanting to know more about classic Star Trek, you know? So it's, it's awesome. The, the next, next generation. <laughs> It's, it's just so special for these kids. It's, it's magical to be able to provide children a learning experience like this. You know, one of the reasons that I do these films, you know, it teaches them about how all this works. You know, it teaches them about, you know, music production, video production, how, how these films come together. And, you know, they, they watch other films and they, and they kind of say, oh, yeah, I know how they did this. You know, they, so it, it, it's really good education for them. And I'll tell you, it's a lot of hard work for everybody. So it's like when, when we do these films and then they, you know, we put them on YouTube and, and when they start getting views and are successful, it's, it's, it's a great payoff for these kids to have all their hard work you know, pay off. So it's, it's, it's been great. Uh, every time we do it. And, and I'll tell you, this is, I mean, we've had some wonderful films. Uh, I mean, this is, this is a good one. I really, I really love this one. 
Well, let the kids know that uh, they're going to get a lot of uh, new uh, Star Trek fans of uh, of them <laughs> after this project. <laughs> Fantastic. I think they'll be excited. Well, thank you very much, and uh, you and your uh, music club live long and prosper, okay? Absolutely. You too.